afternoon, early evening, everybody. I'm Ashley Marie from the band Vinyl Rhino, and you are here live at Local Live here at Making Music. I am super excited. I think I'm actually like shaking. I'm a little nervous right now. Our guest today is a very, very big deal. This is Mr. Michael Gray. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm nervous. Are you? Yeah, a little no, bit. No, you're not. I'm not no, good with interviews. No drum kit in front of you nah. to protect you? Well, you just gotta like hide behind that stuff. You like to hide back yeah. there? I see you as like the quarterback back there. You're like calling the plays, well, right? I don't know how you do it being up front. I can't do that. Oh, really? I wouldn't know what to do if I went back there. So Michael, in case you can't tell already, is a drummer. And not only is he a drummer, he is a touring Nashville-based drummer. Um, here from Frederick, Maryland, went to Catoctin High, right? Yep. Um, and for the past 12 years, he's been on the road with Lee Bryce, who is a, if you don't know him, look him up, he's been nominated for Grammys. He's written and co-written for artists like Garth Brooks, Tim McGraw, the Eli Young Band. I mean, the list goes on and on, Jason Aldean. So, touring for 12 years with such a, a big artist, but before we get there, let's talk about where and how you got started. With Lee? With, with your drumming in general. Oh man, well literally it's in my baby book. Okay. The <laughs> Pots and Pans, true stories in there. And my dad used to put records in jukeboxes from some company here in Frederick, change the greens on pool tables. He always bring the 45s home and I'd play along to him and next thing you know, I bought my drum set when I was six Another one when I was eight. When you were six, so that's when you actually got your first kit. Yeah. And what kind was it? I'm just gonna show you. It was a, it was a Pearl. I got it at Frederick Seventh Street Shopping Center. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. A Pearl. Yeah. That's a, Pearl that's a good Pearl. one for a first kit. A Pearl. That's a nice brand, right? Yeah. Now, what do you play now, though? Uh, let me see. I got Ludwig, Pearl, and Crush. I was endorsed by Crush for a while. For that. Oh. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> But not at six, you weren't endorsed yet. No. Not yet. Uh, but at my first club I ever played, I was 14. Place down at the top of Furnace, Deerdale. I was 14, made 20 bucks a night. 20 bucks a night at 14? Yeah, That's was, a good gift. It was a country band <laughs> called the Virginians. And my dad, we lived down there. I grew up in Thurmont, but my, my, we moved to the top of Furnace at one point. And my dad was up there. He was a big pool shark, okay. Vegas and all that. Sweet. And he took me up to Deerdale teaching me to shoot pool. And the band was setting up, and it was a snowstorm, and the drummer was from York, PA, and okay. and the drummer couldn't make it. And Dad heard the conversation. He knew one of the guys in the band said, hey, my son plays drums. Drums are right down the street. We live we live right down the street. And uh, Jim, the leader of the band, says, no, we can't do that. If somebody from the union comes in, we're getting in trouble. Dad said, hell with the dues. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll pay for it. If, you know, not yeah. dues, I'm sorry, fine. Oh, so that you could get fined? Yeah, because if I'm not in the union, I wasn't in the union. Oh, really? So, about a half hour later, Jim comes to my dad, tell your boy to go get his drums. So, went got my drums, got the gig. Yeah! <laughs> 20 bucks. Hey, tw $20 True is story. nothing to laugh at. I know musicians still are playing for free or, or paying to play in some instances, especially starting out. That was big money when I was 14. I mean, yeah, $20, what <laughs> does well, that get you back in the day? That'll get you something serious. You get a cassette tape single, maybe a couple of them in there. All right, we got some people tuning in already. I knew we would. I uh, want to say hi. Hey, Dawn's watching. Hey, Dawn. Uh, uh, I got to give her a shout out. She's be for her, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Uh, oh, well, we, yeah. should, we should talk about that too. You didn't know her when you were six, I'm imagining just yet. Um, Mark Bransberg says, hi, Michael. Dawn says he's pretty hot. I mean, that's just, uh, I think she's biased. She's but. partial yeah. and blonde. <laughs> oh. Carol Mason says hi, and Mark Ramsburg said, great seeing you Saturday night. Oh, yeah. I went down to Blue Sky, sat in with you no did? exit. Yeah. Oh, man, Blue Sky? Yeah. That's so cool. That used to be Mills on the Hill, and I haven't been there since 30 years. Yeah. yeah. When you're in town, is that something you like to do, is come back and hit all the places you used to get? Yeah, because a bunch of my friends, of course, are musicians. And yeah. I, I say, well, I've got, I got to hit you up this time. I missed you last time. So I'll go out and they'll get me up and I'll play a few songs. I noticed that. It's so cool that you stay so involved in Frederick. So your first gig was there in Thurmont, yep. right? And then after that, what were your influences? What was your next step? Oh, my influences. Well, Buddy Rich was a big one. Of course, I'm not a jazz drummer and big, big Showtime music, you know. Uh, man, of course, I'm a Tommy Lee guy, uh, Mickey Curry, okay. Brian Adams guy, yeah. real solid. Just 
man, just pretty much everybody knew Kurt. Uh, everybody I mean, knew I, you Kurt. gotta throw out me a part. I mean, yeah. how can you know? <laughs> but just pretty much anybody that saw it, I listened to, and pretty much bought any album that was out. I mean, I got, I still, I still have albums, and I still play them. Yeah. My wife bought me a phonograph, a real freaking nice one. Sorry, I don't want to cuss. <laughs> don't, freaking is good. I, I use that all the time. Uh, but I also like shut the front door and let yeah, it be with us. I got a kid upstairs in my music room that I'll use my in ears and plug it into the phonograph player and just play all my albums and just hear the the scratching. Yeah. Oh, what I got, that was one of my best presents I received was an, an album player, and I play, a uh, record player, I play all my parents' old albums, a lot of, like, John Denver, Jim Croce, like, of course, like, Fleetwood Mac, uh, Rumors, and speaking of Rumors, Mr. Lee Bryce, yeah. as the song Rumor, number, right now. Number 11 in the nation. Number 11 in the nation, and that's been on the charts for a couple weeks now. I mean, uh, I've been seeing it climb. Months. Yeah. It took a while to climb up the charts, but... Hopefully, we're, we're keeping him crossed to go to number one. Well, but he's had so many hits already. I'm sure, I'm sure it will. Like, I was just thinking today when I did the research, there were songs that, I mean, I knew all the big ones, but, the, like, the list goes on and on of songs over the past decade that have been just huge. Yeah. We got More Than a Memory, Riff of Guard, yeah. which is his idol, Lee's idol. That, that's my idol as well. I'm going to see him on the 18th, and I think I'm probably going to cry the entire show. <laughs> he's a freak of nature. We opened up for him last year in California. How is that? Open it for I Garth think, Brooks. I think wow. it was probably about 60,000. Oh my gosh. And it was, I'm, I'm scared of a thousand people, like small venues. Really? The big ones, I'm, doesn't bother me at you all. You know, that's the same way I feel. I always feel like you have a big, the crowd becomes like almost a part of the, a band, like an entity. When it's like a thousand, it, it's, I'm more nervous that there's more chance you're going to fail, like people won't like you. Yeah. But with 60,000. Well, if you make a mistake, they're really not going to notice. But when, like, Joe's in Chicago, it's, it always gives, uh, Country Bar of the Year, you know what I'm saying? Country Music Bar of the Year. Okay. And they're, it only holds a thousand, but they're right in front of you, and they can see and hear everything. And you get nervous then? Oh, I do. Yeah. yeah. How often do you play there? Uh, well, we haven't played there for probably four or five years. Yeah. But. It's interesting because, you know, obviously get bigger, like you sell out those rooms so quickly, it's not it's not a good idea. Like, I've seen Kenny Chesney is now doing these smaller yep. venues again, and that's kind of cool to see these big artists, but I don't think Garth is going to be able to, he did Vegas, but I doubt I'd see a full band with him with a thousand people. <laughs> no, but he's amazing. So how was the how was the actual show? The show was phenomenal. We got a response that was probably one of the best in my 12 years of playing with him. It's just 60,000 people just, we're out there taking our bow. Right. And it just keep going on and on and on. And this is probably almost four minutes, five minutes. Oh my gosh. And it was gosh. just like, so we're throwing out picks, drumsticks. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we, I started this thing where, let's give them something different. So, and I have everybody in the band sign, Lisa, and I'll get an empty milk carton or a loaf of bread wrapper. With no way, just, that's Yeah, so give them original. something different. Yeah. yeah. Just, just mix it up a little bit. Oh, that's neat. And that's such a, I mean, like, I bet even for you, like you were saying, like you've been doing this for 12 years, you've interacted with so many celebrities, played the, the Grand Old Opry, which I want to talk about, and still for you, you know, to be around Garth Brooks is still amazing, right? So like there's, oh, I, that's what I think about those fans in the front row, that just to get to you to hand them something is probably making their week or weekend or life. Well, we went up, Lee goes, come on, it was me, the tour manager, and two other guys in the band, they come on, follow me, I'm like, where are we going? They didn't say anything, so I said, all right, I'll follow them. And we're side stage, and there's steps to go up to the stage, and the only person standing there, of course, security, but standing with the steps is Garth. And I'm walking up, I'm probably about, I'm here to the camera away, five, 10 feet, and I, I'm like this, I swear to God, I'm like. <laughs> and he looked at me, he's, and he saw him my reaction yeah. and Lee introduced everybody who, and what we do and I said pleasure to meet you Garth Mr. Garth and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and he shook my hand and he, and he grabbed it with both his hands because he knew the look I gave him like I was like in awe oh, yeah. and what a gentleman what a sweetheart it was, it was a treat Oh, that makes me yeah. feel so good. I mean, I, I got goosebumps. I, I, I get goosebumps listening. I mean, for me, that's what Garth was was probably my biggest influence or one of growing up. I remember as an entertainer, I was like, that's what I want to be. I didn't want to be 
the girl that stood still. I wanted to be the Garth that jumped around and swung out into the audience. And I remember my mom used to yell at me because I would stand on the coffee table and pretend it was my stage and she would ask what I was doing. I was like, I'm Garth Brooks, go away. I'm like six years old, you know? But uh, so Lee has written, just his songwriting is so amazing. Now, for you to sit up there, do you see people just singing along with the words? Oh, do yeah. you sing along when you're playing? Well, I, I do, uh, except for maybe two songs a set, I sing harmonies on pretty much every song. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm backing him up. Yeah. And we got Reggie, keyboard player. He's all, he does the, I don't, the third or the fifth, the high one. Okay. He does. And then we got Travis, which he does sing. And our bass player, he doesn't sing. No. <laughs> He really can't, but he's a great guy. Other than the Eagles, I don't really know. Uh, I'm like, I'm like looking at those bass players, like, oh, well, maybe you just stand back here and sing. Yeah, yeah, he's a great bass player, that's solid. Oh yeah. When do you have to have that being the drummer? How long have you two been playing together? Uh, let me see. Probably four or five years. Well, here's the deal. I'll, I'll get right to the point. Get to the point. We like this. We're live. <laughs> okay. I moved to Nashville. I was 42. Five years later, I joined Lee. I did drums a little over six years. Then after that, Lee wanted somebody a little bit more pizzazz, and we got Donnie Markle. So the past six years, I've been doing percussion and vocals. Okay. And they got Donnie Markle, in which him and I are best friends. Yeah. He grew up in Kyves, West Virginia, and Lee couldn't have got, I'll tell it like it is, couldn't have got it better. Oh, for the last cool. six years, yeah, and he, he he's smart with the computers, the loops, and all that. And oh, I'm yeah. just not into that. But Donnie, I love you. Oh, I get a shot. Yeah. That's so. And he's oh, my man. golfing buddy too. So about the golfing, is that just because like drummers, like you were always golfing? It seems like you yeah. got a good chance to do that because you have you're good with sticks. Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> it's me, Donnie, Lee, and our tour manager Philip. Okay. Uh, we usually try to golf every city. Lee, not too much because he's his bus, we have three buses, his, his bus is a studio, so he knocks all, like our last album was recorded there, on, on the bus. bus. What? Yeah, the drums too, and uh, so when Lee gets home, he doesn't have to worry about going to the studio. Yeah. And he can stay home with his wife and three kids, so he knocks it out on the road. So, that's something I wanted to talk about, and luckily we, we have a little time. Um, going back, let's go back to your story for just a minute, because I know I'm super fascinated by how, uh, you know, a hometown guy, hometown boy from Frederick, you, you moved to Nashville at what age? 42. 42. And what made you decide to do it? Like, this is what I want to do. Well, I told my wife, I said, man, I was weekend warrior. I was, I was doing a house gig, Clubs to Bills, down in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, I did that for eight months, and I'm like, man, that's bogus. I said, I said, let's go to, let's go to Nashville. I think I still have a little bit left in me. And she goes, really? I'm like, yeah, so we packed everything up, just her on the biggest U-Haul we could get. Took off to Nashville. What? Is, oh my gosh! How supportive is she? She's the best. I definitely yeah. the best to yeah. just move up and uproot and move. Yep, yeah. everything. So. Uh, so you get there. Get there, and so uh, here's a good story. We go to this first club. It's the Broken Spoke, and we go in just trying to do a little networking. Yeah. And I was a little shy. I'm usually not, but just being in Nashville, that freaked me out. Don goes, went up to the band that's playing, says, here's $10, can my, my husband get up and play? So uh, they said, yeah, so I got up and played a few songs and went down to Broadway where all the honky tonks are. Oh yeah. Did the same thing and I, I lucked out and got the best slots. At Tootsie's, the back room. Oh my god. And gosh. a place called The Stage. Yeah, I love, The Stage is huge. Yeah. That's where I, you get all the major acts coming in all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got the 10 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. slots for I, almost five years I played down there. And then I'm playing at Tootsie's one night, and Lee comes in. I didn't know him. Man, my mouth dry. Anybody got any water? Yeah, we can, get, can, we get you, can we get you a water? We got people here. It's just like being on tour, but it's there making music. Not only do we have water, we have what, guitars, I mean, amps, whatever you need. We got, we got so if you're thirsty, if you're, if you're fidgety, we'll give you a guitar. It's fine. You're anyway. <laughs> so Lee walks in. I'm playing with this guy from, I know you know this show, um, Nashville Star. Yeah. Well, I was playing with a guy that was on that show the year, Chris was, Young. Well, Chris, who was the guy you were playing with? Jared Ashley. Jared okay, Ashley. Fine. We don't even want that. That's fine. So right. anyway. Yeah, he, Lee comes in, and Jared knew Lee, and I didn't know him, but Lee came in and, and sang two songs. I'm like, damn, 
is this guy? Instant I mean, romance. Let me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm like this guy, crazy. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, throughout the next year, I've known Lee. I've you know, seen him here and there. Blah blah blah. And I quit the guy I was with, you know, Jared. And I found out. Ah, oh, thank you. Now listen, these are the touring size waters. I mean, so this we just figured you'd be used to that on the bus. They don't have a lot of room. So. Thank you, Walter. You know, well, we got to tell you. So Bye. anyway, <laughs> where was I? Oh, yeah. So So you were like, forget this other guy. He's great and everything, but yeah. you had the connection with Lee. Yeah, so I found out Lee was going to start a band. So I told my wife, she goes, well, where's he at? I said, well, he's on a cruise ship. He's going to be on a cruise ship in a week or so. So she goes, let's go. Well, I'm sure she wasn't su super mad about a cruise ship. I mean. <laughs> yeah, true that. <laughs> So we hopped on a plane, went down to Florida, jumped on the uh, cruise ship, and they had a Q&A a couple days later. And for some reason, the narrator gave me the microphone first. Yeah. So I said, hey, Lee. He goes, Michael, that's you? I'm like, yeah. I says, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'll be honest with you. You know, I quit so-and-so, and you know I'm unemployed. I uh, hear you're starting a band. Yeah. So I just came down and asked if I could have the drum slot. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so the narrator took the mic back. Nothing was really said about it too much. So Lee texted me a few hours later and said, hey, meet me at 12th and Porter Club in Nashville. Okay. I've got a question for you. So, so I met him down there a few days after we got back off the cruise. And he said, hey, you want to be my drummer? 12 years later, here I am. I did six years drums and past six percussion and vocals. Harmony. Yeah. So just really just... Your advice uh, was one of my questions for anybody that's still looking to, you know, make it as, as you have. Just is it just putting yourself out there? In your words, what would you say was well, your secret to success? Uh, well, I don't know what really make it means. Yeah. Oh, good. Good point. Very good point. Uh, I mean, I thought about that a lot when once we started. We had four number ones on our love album. Yeah. I'm thinking, wow, this is great. I made it. I, but then I'm like, mm, what's that really mean? Yeah. But advice, oh God, it's, it's probably one of the toughest businesses in the world, the music business. Mm -hmm. And just keep them crossed, pray. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I, that's pretty much the only advice I can really give. Crack your butt off. Yeah. Um, network. Uh, you got to be nice. I mean, there's so many. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Shady. Well, Scandalous. Not, you gotta be. I mean, if you don't play the game, you're going. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a game, but with with our camp, everybody's been with us. The rest of the guys, eleven years, me twelve, wow. and and the and our crew, just all amazing guys. Lee won't have one. No bad, bad per, Oh yeah. no, <laughs> going. As, but he's the best guy to work for. But man, just pray and work hard and keep him crossed. Yeah. You just never know. And, and have a supportive spouse, a support well, system, or whatever that may be, friends, family. Yep. Yeah. It's, but it's a rough business, but uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. And the struggle was great because nobody can ever take that away from me. You know. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, playing Broadway five years, uh, yeah. you get a thirty dollars base pay, and then you beg for tips, pass the tip jug around. You've been down there. Oh yeah, I played. I played the stage. Oh uh, yeah. well, yeah. there you go. Not so lucky you know enough to deal. play Tootsie's yet, but. <laughs> but uh. You know, you beg for money, and when we moved down there, man, we were macaroni and cheese, ramen noodles. I'm serious. Then Dawn, you know, she finally got her corporate gig because she, she's a college grad, and smart, and all that. And so money finally coming in, yeah. so we'd be better. But uh, now, nah, just train of thought is all gone. That's okay. Just your advice, and your and like you touched on something that I think is really deep and really important. You said like, what is making it? You know, and I read a Bruno Mars quote once that said, like, they said, oh, what would you be doing if you if you weren't, if you hadn't made it? And he's like, I'm doing the same thing. I'd just be doing it for less people. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're never going to stop drumming. Nope. If you're drumming, you're never going to stop playing guitar. If you're, hopefully you're not. You know, it's just the, the scale of whether you're doing it for a thousand people and getting nervous or 60,000 and closing your jaw in front of guard. Yeah. <laughs> I, know when, I know when the Lee Rice thing comes in, when he, if, he, if he doesn't want to tour anymore and just stay in Nashville and because he's a hell, heck of a songwriter. Yes, I'll, yeah. I'll put a classic rock band together and just play a 100-mile radius around Nashville. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll never stop. 
So tell me about, um, is it true, there's a rumor, inserting that for a, for a fact there, there's a rumor that you used to teach here at Macon Union? I sure did. Is that did. true? Yeah. Okay, so tell us about that. Uh, Reggie and Pam gave me a job. Reggie and Pam, been here since 1980, what year was it, guys? I think four. In 1984. Third. So, 35 years, right? 35 years, yeah. Ooh. I'm just not good at math, so I had to ask the year. I knew it was 35 years, so 1984. Um, and we do offer lessons here. And you used to teach drums here? Yeah, I think I was 30 and I stopped after five years. I guess I was 35 and a half, something like that, when my son was born. So, but man, it was a great five years. Yeah. And extra money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A local, well. a local lessons are a good gig for a lot of people that are having, like, you know, like you were talking about making ends meet. It's hard to find, like, work. To, it's literally the best day job for a musician, you know? Well, my day job right now is golfing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the problems you have, Michael Gray. Let's see who's tuning in, because I know we have a lot of viewers today. I don't want to miss anybody. So, uh, I already said some shout-outs, some haze. Shelly. Sievers says hello. Oh, my Natalie, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Waddell says hometown proud Michael. Yes, I love that. And my buddy Dave Conrad from WFRE says can't hear you because I'm on the air, but I'm here. <laughs> you I watch. Love Dave. You can watch it later. Dave, Dave is such a, a gem. I, we are so honored to have him here. And a drummer too. And and a drummer too. That's what. Oh, such a great guy. We got we're gonna get him on the show at some point. Mike Donnelly says hi, Mike. Call him. Uh, uh, High school graduate with him. Oh, from Kentucky? Yeah. Oh, man. All these local folks tuning in. Doug Lehman says, what's going on, Michael? Gary told me about you being on Local Live. Is that Gary, I guess, one of our instructors <laughs> Had here? Had lunch with... No, Gary, uh, uh, when I just got high school, I got a phone call from these older guys, probably about 10 years older than me. Okay. Straight out of high school, rock band, and he was a keyboard player. And you were the baby in the band. Yeah, I was oh. 17. And uh, I had lunch with him today. Really? Yeah. That's so cool that you still keep in touch with oh, everybody. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, life's short. Uh, Jason Kane says, hey, Michael G. Is that the same Jason Kane that I used to sing with? Yep. He's a, oh, my gosh, is he a vocalist. Woo! So when Jason sings Vince Gill, so good. Um, He's good. Uh, Dave Stacone says, hi, Mike. Glad you're home. Good to see you. That's my old bass player. Man, we have a lot of friends in yeah, common. Yeah, I remember Dave. <laughs> Dave played for, with, with me for... And we called him Daddy Dave because he was more protective than my actual father. When <laughs> I was like 16 and guys would come up to the stage and he would just be like, no. <laughs> yeah, so he's cool. He said two stars in one room. Yeah, he was supposed to come see me in Gettysburg at the Majestic Theater last month. Yeah. What Dave. happened? What happened, hey, Dave? Dave? Putting you on the spot right here, Dave Stacone. You could have played bass maybe. I don't know. He sounds like the bass player is pretty good. Other than the singing, we know you can sing, Dave. All right, Miles. <laughs> Uh, Miles from here say he's a drum instructor here now. Miles, if you don't get to meet him, um, Eric says the man giving back to the community. Wookie. <laughs> Eric too. Uh, Eric Wookie, like he DJs, he does everything. I did a benefit with him a while ago. He's great. Rick Free says ask him whatever happened to the Afro. Hey H. <laughs> I had a fro like this. You had a fro? Uh, well, it was naturally curly. Naturally curly, okay. All natural. We always end up talking about hair on this show. I got, <laughs> I got a haircut years later, and I had a shortcut with spiked up, and then then I had to grew it out, and what you see is what you get. Well, you're rocking that cool look. You gotta see, well, you know what? I'm gonna say, Rick, you gotta keep up with the trends. You know, I don't know that afros are in style right now, but we'll I could check back. I'm falling out of touch. I'm like an old, I'm like an elder millennial, so I gotta like ask a friend. I'm not really sure. Debbie Patterson says, "Hey, Michael, Debbie and Ralph Crabs." Uh -oh. That is a very cryptic message. Maybe yeah, we're can gonna have crabs me. Wednesday night. Are you getting crabs? Yeah. Where are you going? We're going to Rubes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I heard your Avery's really good too. Avery, I'm hearing good things about Avery's. I'm a Liberty Road girl myself. That's just my. my oh, yeah, I ate there last year. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's, that's my spot. Um, that's my personal preference. But anyway, let's see some other stuff that I did want to talk to you about. See, uh, if you had, you talked about the garden gig. Now, obviously, that's going to be memorable and wonderful. Absolutely. And I could hear about that all night. Um, have you ever had any crazy gig stories from the road that you can share? Any, if you ever show up to a gig and something very uh, off the wall or interesting uh, happened? Well, I have a good one. We were on tour with Luke Bryan for six months. And... Last show of the tour, you know, they always do pranks. Yeah. So I think who, I forget who was with us. 
Well, I Josh didn't know Thompson. that. They always do pranks. This is yeah, awesome. I'm like, yeah, like I know. I didn't know that. Anyway, we were there, the main opener, and then they had the opener opener. And I, I don't know if it was Josh Thompson or not. But anyway, we rented, oh, I didn't, but Lee and somebody else rented two goats and brought up on the stage and with, with the, you know, the, the leashes okay. and just handed them to Luke mid-song. In the middle of a song. And walked, and <laughs> Lee went up and handed them to him and walked off stage. And Luke's standing there with two goats. Yeah. Uh, At that point, did he say, just kidding? <laughs> no? Well, they got his back. <laughs> <laughs> they got his back, but not very good. They Wait, what they do? They just tool papered the bus. I mean, I, I like the one where they put, what's those, uh, Little white things, the, the stuffing. Like, oh, the peanuts? Yeah, like the, the packing peanuts. peanuts. Like Brad Paisley did that to somebody's tour bus, a hole inside. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Brad. You know how that stuff sticks. Brad, that's terrible. I've heard of getting a little mud on the tires, but not some peanuts in the bus. That's ridiculous. That's terrible. That's good. Thank you. I'm Brad Paisley. Man. I think my favorite game is to involve country song lyrics in everyday life when people don't even know. You know what I mean? You gotta just love like crazy. Live like crazy. That's a Eagles song. Anyway. So, you play here in Frederick with Lee. Uh, two shows you were mentioning. One was at the Great Frederick Fair. Yep. One was at Baker Park. What is that like to be playing such a big show back in your hometown? Is it? Do you see faces in the crowd when you're drumming? Is it too many lights hard to see? What's uh, that experience like? Yeah, well, Baker Park well, that was that was some was still up, but uh, of course my family came, and uh, that was that was it's kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, you know, all my friends, a bunch of my high school friends were there, but Frederick Fair. I probably had over 100 friends from high school, and it's like came full circle because my parents used to take me there yeah. when I was a kid every year, uh -huh. me and my sisters, and you know watch the bands. Right. And then about two months before we were playing at Frederick Fair, my tour manager texts me and says, "Hey, you can't you can't post this until uh, it's officially posted from the fair, uh, Frederick Fair." Right. We're playing at Frederick Fair. I'm like, what? He's like, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Again. I'm like, wow, that's crazy, and and it was a great show. It's just, just, just blessed, man. Just so blessed. Yeah, and lucky. that's so neat. Now, so a little bit more about tour life before we wrap up. So you, you just when did when was your last date of this past tour? When was your last? When did you? Because uh, you're golfing now a lot. Uh, See that yeah. Now. Well, we we <laughs> had a few days. Well, a couple weeks off. Uh, 29th of May, wait a minute, no, April I, I was off and I, we fly back, we fly to the West Coast, uh, the 16th of this month. The 16th. Yeah, we do a couple shows, one in Montana, one in Oregon, and we come back to Nashville for like three days, then we hook up with Rascal Flats for Ooh, three shows. Oh, have you played with them before? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute, no. Maybe one show, I can't remember. But Jim Riley. <laughs> oh, the problems tonight. <laughs> yeah, everything's right. Can't keep them all straight. But Jim Riley, Rascal's drummer, is a neighbor of mine. Oh, no he way. He lives down the street, yeah, so. Do you all, and we were talking about this a little early before we interviewed, is in the community, what's that like in Nashville? Do you all know each other? Do you run into each other out? Yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, a bunch of, not so much the artists, but the band members. They live in my neck of the woods, and just all, you know, outskirts of Nashville. Yeah. Not most of them live in Nashville because it's pretty expensive. Down oh, there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we run into each other. You know, we have, a, like, we have a drummer's lunch on the first Wednesday. No, you month. do not. Yeah. A drummer's lunch? This is like the Red Hat Society. But I love it. Made, I haven't <laughs> been there yet. It's been I, going on for a few can years. Can I have cookies and tea and everything? Nah, it's usually some Chinese restaurant or something. Really? Like that. Yeah. But it's very cool. I mean, yeah. Pictures I see. Well, I hope the silverware is not safe. If that, if that brunch, I want to see that. Uh, chopsticks. Yeah, chopsticks, that's right. That's why you're picking it. The puns are already there. Chopsticks for the drummer's meeting. So we talked about where you're from here. Talked about where you've been. What's next for you? What are some goals? I, I thought it was cool you talked about, like, if you the tour cut now, you'd start a classic rock band. That's so fun. Um, what are some of your goals for the, for the next couple of years? What are you looking forward to? Man, it's just Lee Bryce. Yeah. I'm so dedicated to that guy. Um, I just hope he keeps going for a long time. Yeah. I mean, it's because his his music, his lyrics have so much substance. Oh. It's just, it's not bubblegum. You know, it's, that's why I stuck with him. I, just, I mean, he's like, just the best boss. Every guy in the band rocks. 
I mean, we're brothers. We get home from the road, we'll call each other up. Say, hey, you want to go off or you want to go fishing? Aww. Yeah. You miss but, each other. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I just yeah, hang with the wife. Yeah. Stay with Lee as long as I can. That's that's my future. I love it. And golf during the day. Golf during the day, drum at night. There's uh, nothing wrong with that. And, yeah. and spend quality time with your wife in between. Yeah. Well, I've been, it's been my pleasure to have you as our guest today. I've been so looking forward to it that I'm actually sad that it's ending right now. <laughs> so everyone, this has been uh, Michael Gray. Let me see if there's any other comments here. Just lots of hellos from everyone. And, uh, oh, Dawn said the Vegas Route 91 show. She said that. Oh, was... with the shooting. Oh, oh. Yeah. We were out there. That you were out there day. for yeah. that? But a couple days before the shooting, but yeah. we were walking the streets. Well, right that, in that hotel. and you guys are, I mean, that just goes to, what you were saying earlier, just a lot of prayer and, and yeah. good vibes. Um, uh, David says, watching in Palm Bay, Florida. It's good to see Mike. And uh, <laughs> Debbie's definitely looking forward to those crabs on Wednesday, so we don't want to keep you too long. But <laughs> this has been my guest, Mr. Michael Gray. Thanks so much. And this is Local Live. I'm your host, Ashley Marie from Vinyl Rhino. And um, we'll see you next time. We're going to have the Fun Boys on May 21st. And don't forget about our Rock and Roll Yard Sale on May 11th, and also your homework for this week, because you know I like to give you homework, is to listen to Lee Bryce songs. As Michael was saying, I'm lucky that I already knew them ahead of time. They've all made me cry before, but listen to a few great tracks and uh, and then go see a show with Michael. Come see me. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you again. We're here at Making Music, and we'll see you next time.